Well, hello and welcome to a, another broadcast here on HAPS and another broadcast following up from the one yesterday where we were down in Perryville Wood. With any luck, this will actually start working in a minute and show me on the screen rather than the number one. Anyway, so what we're going to do this evening is going to have a look at a few of the moths from Perryville Wood, where I was running a survey last night, and focus on some of the species particularly that we get in autumn as part of the as part of this feature on HAPS where we are focusing on the um, things that occur in autumn. So I'll put a few pictures up. These are all pictures of specimens that I took in the various surveys I did last night, which we do using a variety of methods. And if you go back to the broadcast from last night, you get to see some of them, some light traps, some sugar lures, looking at ivy blossoms and such like, just to see what's about. And we'll have a talk about some of the species that we found. So we'll start with this one and I'll make it the main image. And this moth, which is coming up here, is called a snout moth. And it's called a snout moth in part because of those fairly long palps at the front, which look a bit like a nose. It's a species, it's a pretty common species. It's a species that is associated with nettle and which is a common plant of course and it's a species that can occur for quite a lot of the year it's not uniquely associated with autumn time of course but it's somewhat associated with autumn and we certainly tend to see quite a few more of them at this time of year and therefore i thought i'd, I'd include it in this broadcast about some of the autumnal moths that we found um, it's a species that's seen something of an increase in its distribution in in recent years and recent decades and um, where i talk about the sort of the distributions and, and the population trends i'm mainly drawing it from the fairly recently published atlas of britain's and britain and ireland's larger moths which i'll hold up um, temporarily make myself the main image so people have got a chance to see that it's a rather a nice publication and gives you a lot of information about what the moths are and what they're doing. Um, so I, I pretend to use that way. I'm talking about which species we've seen, which species we've, or how species have populations have changed. But this one, I say, is a snout moth. Uh, Hypenia proboscidalis, so sort of scientific name referring to the same feature, those long palps at the front, which look like a snout. Next species that I bring up, and this one is much more a species that is associated with autumn and that we really start to see in the autumn months. This is called the lunar underwing. And again, I will put the, I will put the image, the, the notifier up saying what it is on the screen so people can have a look at it. Um, lunar underwing, the name there refers to a feature that you can't see on the specimen there, but on the under, the hind wing, of this moth, there is a sort of crescent moon shaped marking, which gives it its name. And again, this is a species, the distribution, the population has largely been stable of this species over the past few decades, according to the, uh, the moth's atlas. 
Um, and looking at the distribution trend, it's, it's been pretty constantly as an autumn species. It doesn't seem to have a major shift in its phenology. So this, again, is one of the things that tells me that it's autumn when I start to see these in the various surveys I'm running. And it's a, quite an attractive moth. They can vary a little bit in the colour and the intensity of the colour and the darkness of the colour. But once you get your eye in, they're pretty distinctive and pretty easy to recognise as, as this species. Uh, no idea what the quality of the images are going. I'm hoping that because I uploaded the photographs to HAPS, we're not running into bandwidth issues here with displaying at least the images, although I myself might look really rather fuzzy and blurred. So we'll bring the next species up. And this again, this is one that's not really massively an autumn species. It, it occurs pretty much throughout spring, summer and autumn. And this is one called the Willow Beauty. Uh, I've put two images up here. The, the, the main one is the upper side and the smaller image is the underside. And that's partly because they have a, one of the features to identify this moth. One of the, the features, one of the markings, these converging lines on the upper wing is on the underwing. It's got this rather square white spot at the outer corner of the wings. And that's partly what feeds into the scientific name, the, the specific name Rhomboidaria. It's referring to that, I believe, square marking on the outside of the wings. Again, this is a species that really can occur pretty much from you know mid-April right the way through until well into October. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's particularly an autumnal species as such, although often I, I get the impression I get slightly more of them later in the year, but that's that's a bit subjective and really the, the data contained in, in the recently published Moth Atlas doesn't really support the idea there's any particular autumnal trend to this. But that's Willow Beauty. Again, a relatively, well, extremely common species really. And one that's been pretty stable in its population in most ways, certainly in its distribution, but perhaps reducing its abundance somewhat in in recent years. We'll move to another species that I will put up now. Oops, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Hang on. So this species is called the square spot rustic. Zestia xanthographa. And again, it's more of a, a sort of a late summer than an autumn species, but the distinction between late summer and autumn is a bit arbitrary, really. Um, and this can be one of the very common moths, quite variable actually in its patterns, um, and quite easily, particularly when you get when you're just starting and looking at moths, or even now, frankly to get rather confused about what about some examples of this and think that they are something much more interesting than they are or much more unusual than, than, than they actually are. But square spot rustic tend to start seeing these perhaps late July. Um, I would normally get these and then through August and really sort of peaking late August, early September. So as much a late summer species as they are a as much a late summer species as they are an autumn species but nevertheless it's one that we got quite a few of and pushing the theme slightly is a species i am call that as uh, yeah, i say it's associated with larva mainly feed on grasses although they will take some other food plants as well
So that's another another species. It was a relatively poor night last night, I'll be honest. I didn't get very many moths to any of the trap methods I used. It was I expected a bit more, but the sky cleared up fairly early, the temperature fell, and that's never ideal for looking for Lepidoptera. You, you ideally you want a nice cloudy night where the temperature stays warm. But there was quite a lot of mist last night, quite a lot of cold temperatures, and that, that probably just reduced the number of things we got. But we got a few species, and we're going to have a look at a few of them, a few more of them as we go through. Bring the next one up. Again, this is one that I really cannot in any way claim is properly an autumn species at all. Um, large yellow underwing, an extremely common moth, and one that really you can get sort of a large part of the year, um, pretty much. Like I suspect it has probably been recorded nearly every month of the year, if not every month of the year, somewhere in the United Kingdom. Um, but it's a species that it's popular. It, you, numbers start to build up from from May onwards. And so again, one of those things that peaks around the back end of summer, late August into early September. So right about around sort of the peak of its emergence now. So again, something of an autumn species. These these yellow underwing moths tend to build up and and be peaking round about now at the start of autumn. So they can they can fit in here as a moth of autumn to meet the theme today. Because here on on Haps they're doing they have a theme every week that. People try to do broadcast on the theme this week is autumn or fall because it's an American company, so they call it fall. Uh, so I thought I'd, since I've been doing a survey in autumn, I would share some of the autumn species and some of the things we've got and talk about them. So this is, I say, the large yellow underwing. It has a bright yellow hindwing, which you can't see. And it feeds, or its caterpillars feed on quite a large variety of sort of herbaceous plants. So again, like a lot of the common things, they feed on a, a wide variety of different species um, of, of food plant. And then in a sense, that's probably why they're common, because they've got a lot that they can feed on. Um, uh, the next species which I'll bring up, let me just bring that to the fore. And this is one that goes by the name of the red green carpet. There we go. Chloroclistra siterata. And this is a species that has really expanded both its population abundance, how many of them there are, and its distribution across well, across the whole country and particularly where I am in the London area. So when I started looking at moths around here, I got a copy of a book on the larger moths of London area, an atlas showing where the moths had been recorded. And this species, the red green carpet, was regarded in that book as pretty scarce, not particularly common, only small numbers of records across the London area. By the time I started getting involved, that, that book was from the 1980s was published. So would have been drawing on data from before that, obviously. By the time I started recording here in the 2000s, we were getting this at the right time of year, which is autumn through winter and into spring fairly frequently. Uh, and that just shows how, you know, species populations can adjust, can change, can move, can vary, can grow. And there is a team now working on updating that moth atlas that I used to update for all of these changes, which will include showing that this species is now much more common than it used to be. So this is the red green carpet. It's a broadleaf woodland species, particularly associated with oak, but it, the caterpillars of it will feed on other broadleaf woods, other broadleaf trees as well. But nevertheless, it's a rather a good, rather an attractive species. 
with this green and these sort of red venations running through it and really rather rather attractive i always rather like seeing these and so it can be regarded as a species of autumn the adult moths emerge in autumn they are particularly prevalent and noted through the autumn period where they the population numbers sort of peak around about September, October time. And then they, they overwinter as an adult, they spend the winter as an adult and come back out in the spring to do the business of laying eggs and, and so on. But they seem to be seen less frequently during the spring months, even though they're obviously there. They're much more easily seen, much more frequently seen in autumn. Uh, and because it's got that distribution, you can get the sort of population trickling on almost into any month of the year. But the real peak of them, the real large numbers occur in these sort of autumn months, September, October, coming into November. And then one more, uh, so we didn't get vast numbers of moths last night. Uh, but this one is called the green brindled crescent. This is one of the dark forms of it. So in this species of moth, the the normal form, if you want, the typical form, is quite green in colour. But there is a dark form which is relatively common in the London area, which this is. And it's a species where the caterpillar again feeds on quite a variety of plants so it's not at all rare nothing we've really seen today has been rare in any way and it's a species that's however has seen a really significant decline in its abundance the numbers of moths of this species that you get nationally have declined by about 75 percent since 1970 according to the the moth atlas although it's, its distribution hasn't really shifted in a, in a particularly significant way it's it's present where it's present it's not really expanded or contracted its range but the numbers of them seems to have really significantly uh, declined and yeah And it's a yeah, it's an autumnal species. It occurs particularly in autumn, really peaking in this part of the country in October. Um, although if you go further north, it has a somewhat earlier emergence as a species. But down here, this this is sort of really round up the start of what I would consider its main flight season here, and I'll probably see more of these as we go later into autumn. So there we go, one more of the autumn moth species. And something we've got that isn't a moth, but we'll put it on anyway, because again, something that is not strictly speaking, an autumn insect is the hornet, which is the largest wasp species we have in the United Kingdom. Vespa crabro. It's not a moth, despite the fact that's what this broadcast is, but and they can fly through quite a lot of the summer and autumn. But I do tend to find that numbers that come to my moth traps peak in the autumn months. I get more of them at this time of year. And they're a fairly placid species in the main. I wouldn't be particularly worried having hornets flying around near me, having a hornet's nest near where I am. But when you get them in a moth trap, they can be problematic, both that they will eat, kill, dice, chop the wings off the moths that you're trying to see, which is not ideal for identifying them. And also because if you put your hand in and carelessly grab one of the boxes in there and you put your hand on a hornet, it will sting you. And that's a little bit uncomfortable. But that's not a moth. So that was just a quick run through some of the moths from autumn that we see here uh, that we get in Perryville. What I will do is I will put a few of these up again. Uh, 
and we'll end the broadcast there with just a few of the moths showing from the various observations that we did. Species associated in the main with autumn. I mean, they're all associated with autumn and it was autumn when I caught them, so they all fly in autumn. But in the main, the, several of these anyway are species that you really get particularly large numbers of or that populations are only in autumn or the populations peak in autumn. So I thought I'd share that there as part of today's HAPS broadcast and the HAPS fall theme. And what we'll do is we'll end with those moths and I'll add the horn. I'll take myself off and add the hornet. And then we will end the broadcast there having a look at some of the specimens that we caught in the surveys I did down at Perryville Wood last night. And I'll continue to hop on and do these broadcasts, just talking about some of the surveys we do, as well as some more ad hoc field broadcast surveys when things happen to occur to me. But with that said, I will drop off here and hope to see some of you soon.